We're looking for the next explicit. Welcome everyone and welcome to another episode of the vlog. So today again we're talking about putting kofta on the grill, right? And getting a classic Egyptian style meal going on and you'll basically see what we kind of had for dinner. And you got to put the kofta on with your hands, right? Because again, got to do it the way your dad does it. And yeah, right there was the aluminum foil. And the aluminum foil is basically for when you put the charcoal in it, it gets nice and hot so that you can make a nice smoky flavor for the kofta. And again, that's something that again my dad does, so you follow along. And yeah, got to do it with your hands. Even though it gets a little hot, it's just, you feel the emotion with the meat, right? You feel like a connection. And again, that's how my dad did it. So I just, hey, you follow and you copy along. And then here I am burning the charcoal so you get it nice and hot, right? Nice and sizzly. Then you put it into that aluminum foil. And as you see, the smoke starts rising up. Close that lid quick. And then, yeah, as you can see, a little sneak peek. And here's a classic little dinner that we would have as a family. Just, there's my brother saying hello. And you're having white rice, jasmine rice, whatever you want. And then obviously, roz and bazilla. It's a classic Egyptian style meal. And again, I enjoy having it. It's one of my favorite dishes. And again, really simple, simple, healthy. And that's what it looks like, plus the kofta. So yeah, that's the meal. Look at the life of the Prophet 
or less than prophets, or majority of them, it was hardship after hardship after hardship. And to look at hardship and our situation and be like, I can be patient. Allah got my back. Whatever happens, it is khair. And that is the attitude of a Muslim. Right? As the hadith mentions, that if something happens to him, that is good, shakar kana khair Allah. He's thankful and that is good for him. When the and if an affliction happens to him, sabr, he becomes patient. Because you never know that some afflictions are good for you. Right? Sometimes we think that afflictions are always bad. Sometimes having an affliction is good for you. It makes you the person that you are supposed to be. It is a time in your life that Allah is building you for something stronger. For something better. The Muslim, to end inshallah to conclude, Whenever someone goes through hardships, number one, he's patient. Number two, he's reliant that Allah Ta'ala will bring him aid. And number three, he seeks reward through his patience. Because as the hadith says, that nothing afflicts a Muslim being with a hardship or sadness or even the prick of a thorn, that the person, his sins are being forgiven. Every time you're in a state of sadness or depression or anxiety, or stress or worry that these are moments where you sit up being forgiven as the hadith mentioned. And we're back at it again with another poke bowl setup. And again, gotta put the green chili sauce, gotta put the coconut aminos, a little bit of garlic sauce, right? Getting it going. And poke bowls are probably one of my favorite meals again that I've learned to make recently. Not only because they're so vibrant and bright and delicious, but they are healthy and they're not really too expensive to create. It might take a little bit of time and preparation, but genuinely so refreshing. And for me personally, I love cilantro and I find it to be such a refreshing taste. And again, adding that kick of the jalapeno, the softness of the tuna, but again, being so like fresh feeling is awesome. And again, adding a little bit of fruits like mango and even avocado. It's nice to have again that consistency and that balance within a meal. And again, I think that's why me and my brother started making these a lot more consistently. But then, the, for example, the rice, it's just leftover brown rice that my dad made the other day. So again, just making sure, remember, you don't have to have all brand new things. Again, just use leftovers that you might have. And again, cherry tomatoes, use them for the salad sometimes. So throw them in there. A can of corn, I don't know, costs like two bucks, maybe tops. So again, you don't have to have super expensive ingredients either for this. So I think that is really nice that I've basically found a way to... Have a low budget meal that also tastes so good, healthy, and very refreshing. And it's nice again too that my brother likes it as well. So we kind of share this meal. But my parents don't really like raw fish really. So again, the Egyptian in them goes hard. You know, they like their grilled fish. So to us, we really do enjoy this. And yeah, the setup is always so fun. But alhamdulillah, Ramadan is such an amazing experience to again try new things, try new meals, do the preparation in the kitchen. And again, don't be like those people again who are they let their mothers do all the Ramadan cooking and don't help her out, or oh they don't help them clean and oh the, where's the tea and they sit down on their butt and don't help out, right? No, don't be those types of people. Make sure you're helping out in the kitchen, doing things, and having your fair share of being part of a family. And that's the point of Ramadan is to be there for one another, to help one another. And remember, it's like important to have this family aspect because without family then what's the point point? and sharing a meal with them sitting down with them even if we're eating different things sitting down together talking about our days things that were really difficult things that weren't is really important and right here is a funny my brothers was like don't be skipping on them fried onions but yeah i hope you guys liked again this little setup and again try it out let me know what you think about eating this but yeah i love this so tasty and again you gotta put the sauce too and a little bit of ginger <laughs> Meaning, when they're angry, when they're frustrated, when they're in a tough situation, 
they hide the anger. They don't make it apparent. And the next characteristic of a person who is granted paradise is the one who forgives others. Allow them. Pardon others. And to pardon someone mean is to forgive someone and to forget everything that happened before. Right? Because forgiving and pardoning is different. When you pardon someone, you totally forget about what happened before. You forgive the individual. And lastly is, Allah loves those who do ihsan. And ihsan, to, to finish inshallah, it is to do things to the best of your ability. That Allah loves the things that are done in the best form. Meaning, when we do something, anything in life, whether it is an act of worship, or something that you're working on, do it to the best of your abilities. These characteristics are those that Allah mentions that Jannah is prepared for these individuals. So be someone that forgives others in times of, of, of difficulty, conceal your anger, and don't leash it out on others, and always give for the sake of Allah in times of prosperity and in times of adversity. Always give. I always loved Adam's amazing little khutbas in Tarawih. But then here I am just again making a bunch of thumbnails and getting to work at night because that's when I kind of had energy to get things going, which kind of sucked. But at the end of the day, that's what you have to do is work when you can when Ramadan, even if you're really drained and really tired. But yeah, I was just kind of, you know, we're here once I go eat a little snack and then just kind of get, got back to editing the videos and getting things going, making the thumbnails, uploading videos, uploading some shorts. It's you kind of do it all at the same time. So, but yeah, that's what you do. And then I was just kind of enjoying a beautiful sunset before prayer and soccer tonight. So I'm really excited for that. Even right here, like that's not a foul, right? Nah, I didn't think so. So, salam alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, this morning I was invited to come play soccer with one of my friends from high school, and he's moving soon, so I won't be able to really hang out with him as much as I really like to. So I'm kind of excited to go play soccer with him and everything. But it's really funny because something I was thinking about was, I think the last time we played together on like the same team was literally maybe in high school on like a rec league team that I played on for fun. And before that, like he was one of my friends that I ended up playing soccer with like all the time growing up. And like genuinely it was like a duo combo or like I would pass him the ball, he'd score, he'd pass me the ball, I'd score. And it was just like a back and forth combination. So I'm really excited inshallah to have a good time with him today. And yeah, it's, you know, it's what you do for the people around you that really do care about you and would be there for you no matter what. So no, inshallah, it's a good time and I'm really excited for it. And yeah, I'll show you guys inshallah when I get there what it looks like. So I just got to the field. Uh, yeah, here, check it out. What's up, D-Man? What's going on? <laughs> it's just a bit chilly tonight. Cold, windy night at Stoke. <laughs> it was fun again to see soccer again at like 11 v 11 because often I play indoor. So it was fun even though get up early, get to play with him. Coming live, got on the goal sheet. <laughs> Just like the U U16 Palmer days. <laughs> gang, gang, six building. <laughs> Manchester United coming live. He said Chester. Keep your fire, Andre. Keep your fire. It was good. It was a good show out, show out. You know, the grass was a little bumpy, but got to play with the boys. Got to have some fun. Now you know, a nice calm drive home. Feel good. Feel free. Live life. All right. Bismillah. So I'm gonna be running roughly around a mile, mile and a half, maybe. We'll see. Just before the way of prayer, just cause sometimes it really does get hard to basically get a workout in during the day. Anyone who's been through a Ramadan or fasted knows that you sometimes just don't have the energy. So, eat a lighter dinner. And Angela, gonna run a little bit. Hopefully just get a nice little blood flow going. Just to keep consistent with at least trying to run or work out once a day. Yeah, last 10 nights of Ramadan. Inshallah, they're blessed. Make lots of du'a. 
there's a little bit of rain so yeah But inshallah, I'll be going to a networking event with Welcome Wagon, Philly startup leaders. Love them over there. Really genuine people. Literally, I've learned so much about different things about startups, different different investors, different types of people as well. So it is really nice to kind of be in like-minded areas and talk to people who maybe have done something similar to what I'm doing as well. So it's cool to meet people from all the way from investors. They got YouTubers there. You have founders, CEOs, people working marketing, tech, sales, crypto, like all sorts of things and again the people there are awesome it's nice to be there and i yeah I drive like an hour and a half two hours sometimes to go to some of these events but in my area it just doesn't exist as often to these types of events so when there are events that are allowed for me to go to why not you got to go after every opportunity that you do have even if it might not seem like oh 
but you never know if one person might change your life or one person might help you get to the next step or anything. And I guess this is an added bonus. We might go to like a iftar over at UPenn. So it'll be cool to see, uh, I guess, a part of the Muslim community, maybe prayer, tarawih prayer there as well. Just depending on seeing what time we have with everything. And inshallah, I'm going there now and I look forward to doing it and showing you guys what it looks like at the event. I might do a little time lapse and maybe I'll get up and speak and pitch something out as well. Why not? Maybe see if anyone wants to be on the podcast. But yeah, so I'll see you then. Philadelphia isn't all too bad, right? It was raining, a little bit of traffic, but sometimes seeing the skylines is really pretty. And like, I personally like seeing it, even though I don't like being in a city too often. But it does look cool and it's like the fog over the city vibe was really nice. But again, heading into Central Philly and going to that networking event. So I was really excited to, you know, get to do something I love doing. So yeah. A little bit camera shy. Yeah, the event was pretty dope looking and it's a really cool building. And yeah, here's a nice little time lapse of the event and us getting things going. And it was cool to get to talk to a bunch of different people. I was talking a little in the middle and the left, just bouncing around all over the place. But it's so cool to see like how everyone's networking, everyone's talking, interacting, and again, just talking about things that they're passionate about. And some guys here come after work. Some people come here after this. Some people come here after teaching a yoga class. And it was really cool to see all the different ideas and all the different people talking. And here we're doing community pitches. So again, different members of the community will go up there and pitch and talk about, hey, this is what I do. This is who I am. Love to connect with you guys. So yeah, it was really awesome. And I really enjoyed doing this networking event, even though I'm fasting. Made sure to take a water with me on the way out because, again, had to get the food and eat with the sister. So yeah. Bag secured. And then now, this is something so special. The next day, I go over to Eastern Air High School where I went to high school. And they're having a community iftar. And I thought that was so dope. And I was like, I got to go. And then after, I picked up my friend to come eat at my house as well. So, yeah, check this out. This is just incredible to me. So, something that's pretty cool that's happening is I'm picking up my friend here who's from Canada and has been traveling to Kenya and stuff, who I had him on the recent podcast. He's going to be the imam. Obviously, the Eastern Area High School, the high school that I went to, actually invited him to, you know, speak, pray maghrib here. But it's really cool because they're having an iftar at the high school. But obviously, I went to high school, like, what, maybe almost 10 years ago. But it's crazy to think, like, wow, like, in a couple of years, look how things can change and things seem to be more inclusive for Muslims as well. And where I remember being Muslim there, it's like, not that it was weird, but it's not as looked positively upon we didn't have if daughters at the high school so yeah i'll get to see what it looks like inside and inshallah it'll be pretty cool get yeah, them and then head back to the crib and have a if of my family and i had some friends over that uh i met at the masjid so yeah we'll get to see what it looks like on the inside Just before we pray Maghrib, I just want to say, uh, like to me, like to see this is crazy because when I think of this space, I think of it way differently. But now it's so grateful to see Muslims seeing this space in a way different light because when I was here, I remember seeing food fights, people getting milk dunked on their heads, people fighting, all the craziest activities. But now I see it's like a place where also Muslims can congregate and pray Maghrib and do all the things. It's pretty amazing. So I'm just so grateful to have witnessed this basically. So yeah, back to it.
Yeah, I don't know why I had to hit that banger on my dad. But then that night, everyone was, again, chilling, sleeping. And I was like, you know, got inspired. Let me make a pizza. And I tried this one time before, so wanted to make sure I kind of replicated the recipe and tried different things. But again, really simple. You just get like self-rising flour, a little bit of nutritional yeast, and then non-fat Greek yogurt. And, you know, measurements there. Put it all in, then mix it up, knead, make a dough. And I think, honestly, it's really fun to be in the kitchen and try new recipes, new things, especially being very macro-friendly and macro-oriented. Like, oh, am I getting enough protein in my day? Or, oh, am I having pointless carbs? And all these different things. And again, me being an athlete all my life, I've always kind of eaten whatever when I was younger and again, burnt all the calories off. But the older you get, the more you're realizing like, wait a minute, like I can't just live that simple, easy lifestyle that I used to live. So you kind of are more macro friendly and kind of do little things to make sure, okay, let me eat things I still like eating, like pizza, for example. But again, finding a way to make them healthy and tasty at the same time. Because again, for me, if food doesn't taste good, then I'm not eating it, right? You don't want to eat food that doesn't taste good. And again, just going through the steps, it was really fun to do this again with my brother and kind of work it out, making a little crust. This one, we tried making a little thinner crust, but the next one, my brother really hooked it up with and he was kneading it and it made it so much thicker. And we wanted to make this one with a, what was it called? The, the stuffed crust, right? You know, put a little uh, moz, mozzarella on the inside crust as well. And then kneading it through felt so nice. And I was realizing that the first one I did, I should have probably used my hands first and then the rolling pin to make it a little easier. But hey, if you're a pizza expert, let me know. But for me, again, looking at this, I was like, you know what? This is coming up to be a nice big circle. Looks pretty nice. And it kind of, again, you see, like, it actually came with me pretty easily. And it didn't rip down the middle or anything. So I knew this was going to be a good one. And I put it onto the, the pan, obviously put it in the oven, made a little crust, put a little cheese sticks in between, right? You get them going, wrapped it around the edge of my brother. And then obviously you crumple it up to make sure you have a nice little crust. And for me, I kind of like having a crust that you can hold it by. But then after that, we put it in the oven to like let it bake a little bit before we put the sauce on, just so that it didn't have to be overcooked with the cheese and get burnt cheese. So as you see, it goes from here to there. You know, just a little bit. I think it was like five minutes maybe just getting it cooked. Putting all the sauce on. And again, for us, we like extra sauce, right? We want it to be nice and saucy. Because again, the sauce is such a good part of the meal. And then I like mushrooms. And we had like some turkaroni. So again, turkey pepperoni. Loaded it up, right? We're not skimping over here on this side. Obviously, crumbled up mozzarella cheese. And then boom, put them in the oven. I see the both they start looking at real nice. And for me, again, just cooking things and seeing different things and trying new things is fun, you know. And then that's a thinner crust one that we made. And then the gem that we really, really liked was this one right here. We just moved it to the next rack above. So, again, it wasn't all the way down because the crust is starting to get a little harder. So, I just wanted to make sure the sauce starts cooking in as well. And there's the finished product. Super crunchy, super tasty. And alhamdulillah, I really enjoyed the meal. And then the next day was the solar eclipse. So, I was basically getting ready to videotape that for you guys. Got it. Ooh. You see that? Mm -hmm. It was so cool to see like that darkness like overtake the sun, right? And it always looks so cool even with the clouds, even though it wasn't a bright sunny day where you can see it super easily. And it was a little cloudy, but hey, that's okay. But something I learned as I was like kind of doing all the research on it and learning about what the solar eclipse does, exactly how it does, that the sun is 400 times larger than the moon. So then you're wondering like, yo, how is that even possible that the sun can get covered by the moon if it's 400 times larger? But alhamdulillah, like Allah is the best of cre creators, right? So the moon is also 400 times closer to the earth than it is the sun so then you make think wait a minute if it's 400 times this way 400 times that way that means they look like the same size in the sky so very rarely the moon will go in front of the sun so it was really cool to see like how brilliant like Allah creates things and just how it's not just coincidence right because that's such a specific coincidence so I thought that was really funny but yeah there's the eclipse if you didn't see it yourself there's a nice little video of it when the Muslim Allah will finish they used to be they used to become sad in the salaf of how the blessed month went by. And you'll see in yourselves. You'll see how in the morning time you used to be busy with Quran and Adhkar, and then once the day comes, everyone goes back to their daily life. Do not be amongst those, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, that wish Allah for Allah Ramadan, and then after Ramadan they go back to their old ways. Try your best. One month you stop all the bad habits. From the first thing you told yourself, I won't do this haram. I won't watch this. 
I won't listen to this. I won't go here. I won't see him. I won't see her. I won't. You made a resolve one month. Which shows you that it's all about your, your mindset and your abilities. Of course, after the fulfilled of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But try your best to keep that resolve after Ramadan. And keep steadfast. And when the day of Eid comes, don't be like those who when Eid comes and arrives, they don't go to the masjid. They don't open the kitab. They don't do istighfar. They don't give charity. They don't do these acts of worship that, were, that they were doing every single day. Do not be a Ramadan Muslim. Do not be just an Eid Muslim. Don't be a Jum'ah Muslim. Don't be a Dhul Hijjah Muslim and a Muhammad Muslim and these celebration Muslims. No, you're a Muslim every single day. 25 hours a day, 8 days a week. All the time you're a Muslim. And you strive to do all these good actions day in and day out. Just in a couple of days, the devils are going to come back. The big guys are going to come back and give you the waswas and bother you and you to commit sins. Now is it, did you build those habits for Ramadan that will keep you steadfast, that will keep you straight, that will keep you working hard? Ask Allah for the tawfiq to keep you steadfast on these days after Ramadan. Keep yourself attached to one another. The bonds that you built for Ramadan, the brothers that you met, don't lose them. Give them salam. Be good to them. Keep in touch with them. Allah says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الْإِخْوَةِ that the, that the believers are brothers, sisters, come together. Don't be like those when after Eid the community is separate. Make sure you donate. Imagine you fed or you gave an orphan food or you gave an orphan water, right? And you donate to the orphans. And as if you did it for more than a thousand months. As your brother mentioned, I remember the Qiyamah, the Prophet who would be with those who take care of the orphans, like this in Jannah, like this. So do not belittle any good deed. You might think, I don't have the money now and I can't give. Allah, I donate. Shaitan is the one that he instills power in you. As Shaitan, يَعِدْكُمْ بِالْفَقْرَ وَيَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ وَاللَّهُ يَعِدْكُمْ مَغْفِرَةً مِنْ وَفَضْلًا Shaitan, he instills in you the fear of poverty and doing bad deeds. And Allah pushes you to, to his mercy and to his fulfillment and to his bounty. What is five dollars? What is a hundred dollars? In the sight of Allah is more. It could be a reason for entering paradise. It could be the reason for all to be forgiven. It could be the reason that Allah blesses your wealth. Because giving charity, it blesses your wealth. It blocks your calamity. It purifies you. And the benefits go on. Always give the sake of Allah. Do not be those, as I said, don't be those on the receiving end. Always give what you have. Whether it be food or anything else, just give. Because Allah will bless you. وَإِذَا نَادَيْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ اتَّخَذُوهَا هُزُوًا وَلَعِبًا ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ قَوْمٌ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ That actually it might have been the last tarawih that we get to do, but alhamdulillah it was really awesome, really incredible, made lots of du'a. But yeah, the next day, getting ready for Eid as well, you know, I got to get my hair braided, it was all over the place, so I was like, you know what? Might as well go get it braided. And uh, braids by Bentu. Yeah, Bentu, she is incredible. Such a sweet girl. She knows how to do it right. She can get you right. She gets you leaving it super fresh. And we had such a fun conversation. We were just talking about life and Ramadan and being a Muslim. And it was so cool, again, to, like, talk to different people about different things in life. And especially when someone has such a cool talent and a skill to basically be able to do something like braid hair. It's like, take advantage of it. You know, if you have skills, use these skills. And again, it's so fun to get your hair braided because you really feel like super fresh after. And it was really funny because we were even talking about how nowadays people will sit there and give reasonings for, oh, this and scientific this and coincidence that. But then at the end of the day, it's all Islam. And that Islam is such a giant barakah in our lives and that has really shaped us and made us to be such excellent people. And it's because of the values and morals and consistency that Islam gives you. But yeah, no, it was awesome and really it was really fun to have these conversations because you need to be able to conversate with people that make you think a little deeper, that make you think harder about life. And she's one of those people. And I'll leave a description down below for her at so you guys can hit her up for some basic braiding and she'll get you super duper duper right. And make sure like for a you do all these things to beautify yourself, be nice, but also remember the day of Eid is supposed to be togetherness, family and 
be ready to be with one another. And I know that my sister will be able to come home. We'll be able to go eat with a couple of different friends, family. And at night, we'll go to this big event with like 60 plus people. And it'll be super fun to eat with a bunch of people again. Other Egyptians probably in the area that we're all friends with as well, like our families and stuff. So it'll be nice. And I think for me, the best part about Eid is really the togetherness. And even though it's another Ramadan, Alhamdulillah, may Allah accept all of our du'as. And basically upcoming is the Eid prayer. So really stay tuned. I love that I got to be able to record this and show you guys what a Eid prayer looks like as a Muslim. Yeah, Bentu is, uh, she do wonders with the, with the braids. Dope girl. She, um, I'll, I'll put her description down below so you guys hit her up. I got you, Omar. I need water for her. What that 
Ramadan, when I started developing my daily Quran series, was that Ramadan when I started performing that particular sunnah? Was that Ramadan when I renewed my connection with Allah? This is how change happens. This is how change happens. When you go back, look back at Ramadan, and you see, I have been changed. I did something different. And Ramadan is meant for that. We ask Allah to make that Ramadan transformative. And to make that aid immediate better for our aid in Jannah. Assalamualaikum. So Ramadan is now over. We had eight prayer. We went out, ate with family for the lunch time period, and then at night we had a dinner with a bunch of different people. Like a party of sixty, and it was really awesome. Again, spend time. I mean, that's what you're supposed to do for Eid. They even say that you're theoretically supposed to take like three days of celebration with people. But again, not going out and wild and doing crazy things, but spending time with friends and family, giving each other gifts, and kind of appreciating this moment, but also making sure that the habits, the good habits you built in Ramadan, you continue these good habits. If this is the first time in for a month you wore the hijab, keep wearing the hijab, really push yourself. This is the first month you, you know, you write a little bit of Quran every day. Keep that habit. It really is the small, tiny things that kind of add up that make you become this better and better person. And Ramadan is meant for that, that spiritual growth and adapting to like the next level of who you want to become in this world. So yeah, thank you guys again for tuning into the vlog. I really did love doing this. It was fun. It was new creative videos for me and I'm glad I got to show you guys a little bit of day in the life, day in the weeks of what a Muslim does week by week in Ramadan. So thank you guys again and inshallah I'll see you guys on the next video.